Hi, this is me. My name is Hamid Chojai, and I've been involved with a number of software development projects over the years at a number of different companies, and I've come to recognize Scrum as one of the best agile development practices in use today. In this fast-paced video, I want to show you why Scrum is so great and how you can get started with Scrum in under 10 minutes. I'll cover all the core Scrum concepts like product backlogs, team roles, sprints, burn down charts, and more. So get ready to be bombarded with information. Let's say this is the product we want to build. For this product, we get all kinds of feature requests from users, customers, executives, or even other team members. In Scrum, the collection of all these features is called the product backlog. Another way to think of the product backlog is to think of it as a wish list of all the things that would make this product great. Once we have our wish list or the product backlog, we need to start planning which specific features we're going to put into a particular release of our product. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's back up a bit. To build this product, we need to have one or more people in our team who are going to play a variety of roles. First, we need her. She plays the role of product owner and helps make sure the right features make it into the product backlog, representing the users and customers of the product. She helps set the direction of the product. Then, we need this guy. He's the Scrum Master, and his job is to make sure the project is progressing smoothly and that every team member has the tools they need to get their job done. He sets up meetings, monitors the work being done, and facilitates release planning. He's essentially a project manager, but that's such a boring title, so we'll call him a Scrum Master to imply he knows some jiu-jitsu. And the rest of the team has similar roles to other development processes. These guys build the product, while these guys test it to make sure it works right. These guys use it and hopefully pay for it. And these guys generally get in the way, but it turns out you can't build many products without them. But let's get back to this, release planning. To plan and release, the team starts with this, the product backlog, and they identify the features they want to put into this release. These features then become part of the release backlog. The team then prioritizes the features and estimates the amount of work involved for each feature, providing a rough idea of the total amount of work involved to complete the entire release. A quick side note about estimates. There are a lot of techniques for creating estimates, from poker games to basing estimates on historical trends to using story points instead of hours. But no matter what technique you use, you'll want to make sure you involve at least two or three subject matter experts. There's simply no replacement for what a subject matter expert brings to the table. Keep that in mind as you do your estimates. Let's get back to this, the release backlog. With a prioritized release backlog in hand, we're now ready to plan out several sprints to get the work done. Sprints are short duration milestones that allow teams to tackle a manageable chunk of the project and get it to a ship-ready state. Sprints generally range from a couple of days to as much as 30 days in length, depending on the product's release cycles. The shorter the product's release cycles, the shorter each sprint should be. And you'll want to have at least four to as many as a dozen sprints in a given release. So at this point, we can take our release backlog and split it up into several of these sprint backlogs. One of the most important things to remember about sprints is that the goal of each sprint is to get a subset of the product backlog to a ship-ready state. So at the end of each sprint, you should have a fully tested product with all the features of that sprint 100% complete. Since sprints are a very short but a realistic representation of part of the product, a late finish of a sprint is a great indicator that the project is not on schedule and something needs to be done. Therefore, it's extremely important to monitor the progress of each sprint with this, a burndown chart. The burndown chart is the number one reason for Scrum's popularity and one of the best project visibility tools to ensure a project is progressing smoothly. The burndown chart provides a day-by-day -day measure of the amount of work that remains in a given sprint or release. In this graph, you can see that the amount of work remaining bounces up and down from day to day, but is generally trending down towards zero. Because historical information is provided in the burndown chart, it's easy to see if the team is on the right track. Using the burndown chart, the team can quickly calculate this, the slope of the graph, which is also called the burndown velocity. This is the average rate of productivity for each day. For example, a team's rate of productivity might be that on a typical day they finish approximately 50 hours of work. Knowing that, it's possible to calculate an estimated completion date for the sprint, or even for the entire release based on the amount of work remaining. What's great about the burndown chart is that we can compare our actual velocity and projected completion date to what the team needs to do in order to finish on time. And we can use that to see if it's a realistic time frame. This is perhaps the most useful piece of knowledge that any team member, product owner, or product executive can have about the project because knowing whether or not the project is on track early in the schedule can help teams make the proper adjustments necessary to get the project on track. 
The burndown chart provides empirical proof that the project is on track or if it's going to be late. So let's talk a little about where the data for this incredibly useful burndown chart comes from. As you recall, part of the release planning process was to create an estimate for each feature in the product backlog. The collection of these estimates for a given sprint represents the total amount of work that must be done to complete that sprint. As each team member goes through and makes progress on one or more of the features, they simply update the amount of time remaining for each of their own items. So the total amount of time remaining on the group of features that make up a sprint changes on a day-by-day -day basis, hopefully going downward until it hits zero when the sprint is complete. The burn down chart aggregates the remaining work data and shows it visually. It's brilliant because it communicates a massive amount of information in just a few seconds. At this point, one question you might have is what do we do about these little guys? Bugs come up during the development of every product, and while there is no way to avoid them altogether, there are some best practices on how to deal with them. First, it's a good idea to track bugs separately from features in their own defect backlog. And during a feature sprint, any bugs that are found relating to a feature in development should be dealt with immediately before marking the feature complete. You'll also want to plan at least one or two sprints that focus only on your defect backlog. And that brings us to this, the daily scrum. Scrum proponents often insist on short, daily standing meetings. The idea behind a standing meeting is that if everyone is standing, nobody will waste time and therefore meetings will be short. And by meeting daily, you can feel confident that everyone is on top of their tasks. The daily scrum is a great idea and especially useful in less experienced teams. But I wouldn't call it a core or essential part of scrum. Insisting on these meetings in an already efficient and experienced team, especially teams that work in close proximity with one another, could actually backfire by lowering team morale. Keep that in mind when deciding on having daily scrums. So there you have it, Scrum in under 10 minutes. You now know all the essential concepts to start implementing Scrum inside of your organization. Let's quickly review them. In Scrum, you work with this, a product backlog, which is nothing more than a list of features. You then break down the product backlog into one or more release backlogs. And for a given release, you further break up the release backlog into a number of sprint backlogs, which are essentially short duration milestones throughout your project. You then monitor the progress of each sprint using these, burndown charts. Depending on your team, you might want to have daily scrum meetings to ensure everything is on track. That's all there is to it. I hope you liked this video as much as I enjoyed making it, but before I let you go, I have a quick assignment for you. Open up your email client and send me an email letting me know what you thought of this video and how it could be improved. Feel free to ask me any questions you might still have. Oh, and thanks for watching.